Photography books are a source of inspiration for a lot of us, including myself. I got into them fairly recently, and whenever I'm flipping through one, I'm inspired by its emotions and the idea behind the project itself. Usually nothing more than that, until I opened up this book. Books truly have the power to transport us to a different world. Uh, I mean, Fred Herzog's photographs does it with such ease. Um, I couldn't stop flipping through the pages and I spent a lot of time in each and every photograph because I was watching a city, Vancouver in this case, go through um, its transformation and, you know, grow with openness. At least that's how I felt looking at Vancouver through Fred Herzog's eyes. I was suddenly invested in these streets, uh, finding the signs and thinking, oh, Fred must have taken this shot from this side of the street when, you know, where he took this shot from, or, oh, look, it's 4.30 in the afternoon when this shot was taken. Um, I mean, I wanted to have coffees uh, at these cafes or get my haircuts done here and eat at these restaurants, you know. More so, though, I wanted to have had the opportunity that Fred Herzog had, which is to watch a city grow um, and grow with the city while documenting it. Aside from being a source of inspiration for photography, uh, Fred Herzog's life and his way of working resonated with me for a few reasons. Fred Herzog was a living embodiment of this. For the kind of work he wanted to produce, color was the ideal medium. Uh, it wasn't the most popular medium at the time. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to be considered a serious photographer doing serious work, black and white was the way to go. He didn't care. Uh, he wanted to document the changing landscape of the city he loved. He also needed independence to create his work without deadlines. He didn't want to conform to the norms. Uh, and somehow he managed to do that too. He shot most of his work using Kodachrome, which meant he had to send off the film to be developed elsewhere, and he got the slides back after a couple of weeks, uh, which meant he didn't spend a lot of time in the darkroom, printing or developing. Uh, he just went out and took photos. In the book, he's described as a photographer with deliberate aloofness. I think that's a very accurate phrase for him because he just knew what kind of work he wanted to produce, and he knew how he could get there, and he stuck to that even though some of the cool kids didn't accept him for not shooting black and white. Fred Herzog had a long-lasting professional career in the field of medical photography. He was also a married man with two kids, and almost all the photographs that he created were made during the week, in the afternoons or in the evenings, a couple days a week. Uh, and that worked for him. You know, he didn't care that he was not a quote unquote full time photographer or that he was not being paid to kind of do these projects. He wanted to make this work and he went out and did it in a way that made sense for his life. I'm not saying do the exact same thing. There's no formula that any of us could follow except that you look at your life, you look at your goals and and you you know do what suits you you know the reassurance you get from looking at Fred Herzog's life and his work is quite freeing that you know in that um, there is no one way um, to gain success or recognition and you can create a work a body of work that you're proud of um, even if you're not a full-time photographer in the traditional sense so yeah you know find what you love and incorporate that into your life in a way that is sustainable in the long run and, and makes sense for you. He went out and took photos for a few hours a day, uh, but not every day, uh, maybe a couple of days a week. Uh, and he managed to shoot over two rolls of film every week for about 30 years, which meant that there was about 100,000 exposures. Uh, and the result is a very beautiful and artistic documentation of uh, the Vancouver city through its economic churn. 
Fred Herzog, in my opinion, is one of the greatest color photographers of all time. But he didn't do the work he did for that reason, though, not for recognition. Um, he did it because he enjoyed the work and no one else was doing it and it had to be done. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again here. People focus way too much on results and lose sight of the process. Um, it is good to have goalposts for sure, but I don't think that's where the joy happens. Um, it happens when you're out there creating consistently uh, without worrying about metrics or recognition or success. Um, it happens when, you know, in those moments when you learn from a failure and if you continue to do that, your work will move forward. That's it for today. Um, I truly appreciate you giving me your time. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can purchase this book. It's not an affiliate link. I think if you have some money to spare, this is a good photography book to invest in. Um, but yeah, thank you. I'll leave you with the Fred Herzog quote. This is the wonderful thing about photography. Every person is his own style. There's no such thing as style. You don't acquire style by going to night school. You don't acquire a style by reading a book uh, that's published by one of the film manufacturers and it's called All the Cheap Tricks in One Volume. That's not how you acquire style. Style is you.